Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Lafontaine. First things first, uh, where are you from? Who are your people? Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into medicine. Yeah, so I, I currently live, work, and play in Treaty 8 territory in northern Alberta. I practice out of the Grand Prairie Regional Hospital in Grand Prairie. I'm originally from Treaty 4 territory in southern Saskatchewan, you know, Métis homelands. So I'm Métis with OG Cree ancestry and also Pacific Islander on my mom's side. I love it. You know, uh, in Canada, the projected lifespan for our people is 14 years shorter than for a non-Indigenous person. A lot of your advocacy up until now has been trying to reduce that gap. Now that you're president, El Presidente, uh, you know, how, what would you be your thoughts? What would you like to see for Canada to achieve equal health care for Indigenous people? So we, we always talk about what we can learn from Indigenous people, and I'll tell you there are a lot of learnings that the healthcare system can receive from Indigenous people in the midst of the crises we're having right now. You know, Indigenous health, we're all used to crises in our communities, you know, cycling shortages of physicians, lack of resources, you know, not having the things that we need or the places to receive care in places that are close to where we live and where our families are. Yeah. And that crisis is now spread across the country. and. Persons in, in rural areas off reserve and outside of, uh, you know, Métis homelands and, and other places, you know, they're, they're feeling the same sorts of pressures and it's even spreading into the cities. And so, you know, our, our approach to crises where we double down on seeing each other as people, where we come together and we actually find community-based solutions that are informed by the people who actually experience the harm or experiencing the pain. Uh, I mean, we that's a template for making sure that we move forward and actually make effective change in Canada. Yeah, uh, you know, right now Canada's we're 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 seeing all these shortages. Like you've said, like we've seen uh, in First Nations forever. Um, mm -hmm. What you know is it even possible to reverse the trend that we're seeing? I mean, like there's not a machine that makes doctors and nurses, right? How do we get more people doing it to address this like massive shortage? You're 100 percent right. The the best time to train somebody was yesterday, but the second best time is actually today. So. We can invest in ensuring that we have more medical students graduate, that we have more people move into family medicine and other specialties, and that they choose places to practice that have the most impact. Mm -hmm. um, other things that we need to consider is how do we move barriers for folks to be mobile across the country? You know, if you're an Indigenous physician practicing, say, in Anishinaabeaski Nation Territory in, in Northern Ontario, I mean, if you want to provide care in Northern Manitoba, uh, you have to reapply for a license and you have to get registration there. There's just a lot of paperwork that really increases the friction to you providing care to folks who really need it. And removing those barriers could provide a lot of benefit when it comes to appropriate virtual care, it can provide a lot of benefit to people that are willing to move around and, and follow patients where they live versus asking patients to follow them. Um, solutions like this are, are kind of low-hanging fruit that I, I think are seriously being considered nationally now. What advice do you have for any uh, Indigenous kids out there looking for a career in medicine, whether as a doctor or a nurse? Uh, what, what advice would you have for them? You know, I'll share with you the same advice that Tom Dignan gave me. He was a family physician from Ontario that was recently inducted into the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame. Uh, he passed away way earlier um, last year. He told me that you belong here. You know, if there's anything for people to take away from me being the first is that I cannot be the last. And the only way that that's going to happen is for our youth to realize that they have a place in medicine and other places. And if you reach out to me, I'll, I'll support you in your leadership journey. There's lots of us across the country that want to support you. I love this. Well, thank you so much. We are proud to have you in the top spot there and for joining us here today. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.